Okay, we'll get started now. I'm sure others will keep joining in, but we'll just go ahead and get moving because there's a lot to talk about today. First of all, um, I guess the announcement that I want to make is that this is uh, officially the start of season two of World Kitchen because we started this in October of 2020 as a way to um, stay in touch with all of our viewers and listeners who maybe weren't able to come out to in-person events. And we were trying to think of ways to stay engaged with, with our friends and um, our members and our viewers. And so World Kitchen was just a way to do that. So we weren't sure when we started how it was gonna go or if it would continue, but um, we've gotten so much great feedback and people seem to be enjoying it. So we are starting season two. Um, for those of you who missed any of season one, it's always available on our website. You can always go to wpsu.org slash World Kitchen and look at um, previous episodes. So um, now that we're coming into the fall, I'll just say, you know, last fall we did, the very first episode was baklava. So if you're interested in learning that, you can go back and watch that. We've done things like holiday cookies from around the world. We did pumpkin rolls around Thanksgiving time and, and another um, special Persian roll with whipped cream. So there's a lot of things you can go back and see if you weren't um, already aware of this last year when we got started. So today is um, the first episode of season two. I'm calling it International Charcuterie. Um, it's kind of just everything charcuterie and boards. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm a big fan of Pinterest. And I've seen so many interesting boards and charcuteries, and it's kind of become a fun thing in my family that we do because a couple of my daughters are vegetarians. One has a lot of um, food sensitivities. So it's a way to create um, a board or, or something to keep out when you have family over that everyone can engage in. And you don't have to worry that you're gonna have something out that someone can't eat because there's gonna be something else that they can. So um, I've gotten really into doing this when we have family gatherings. Um, I like to do it at breakfast time. Um, and, and I just wanted to go over a little bit about the, the history of charcuterie. Obviously, that's how we pronounce it here in the US. That's not how the, uh, the French would pronounce it. Um, and I'm not even gonna attempt that. <laughs> even though I took high school and college French, I'm not going there. It's been a little too long, but um, it, it's, kind of gotten to be an art form really. I mean if you if you look at, at Pinterest and some of the other things you'll see people who really do fantastic artistic things with their vegetables um, to make them into rosettes or to um, you know make a tree or something like that. Um, so you can check that out um, later on if you have an interest in doing that. <coughs> One of the things I'll say is when you're doing this, um, it's good to use whatever you can that's in season. So if you have fruit that's in season, like right now, we have great apples and pears, and I'll be using some of those today. Um, use whatever you can find locally and in season. Um, try to go to farmer's markets or um, contact your local farms if you don't have a farmer's market near you and see if you can purchase directly from them. Um, so the other thing I wanted to mention just off the top is that you don't have to be stuck to any one theme. I mean, I'm going to show you like an Italian board, a French board, um, kind of more of an American board that's just kind of a conglomeration of what we seem to do. And then I'm going to show you a really um, fun thing that I like to do for our family, which is a Persian breakfast um, tray board. But it, it can be anything you are interested in and anything you can think up. You can come up with your own theme. I've seen people do taco boards. Um, there are these massive boards you can buy in different on different websites now that you can really not even hold. I mean, they're so huge. And you can use those to do um, taco board. Maybe you would wanna put on there some meat and cheese and salsa, uh, tortilla chips, uh, breakfast boards could be bagels, salmon, cream cheese. Maybe you wanna do one that's biscuits and gravy or pancakes and different syrups and different fruits and whipped cream. You can do a dessert board that might be cupcakes and cookies, flavored nuts and fruits. So you can just come up with whatever interests you and go from there. The other thing you wanna think about is color. Obviously making something colorful and appealing to the eye is helpful. You can also think about different textures and shapes. Um, so mix it up and don't be afraid to mix salty and sweet. 
I mean, everybody knows that salty and sweet's great. Who doesn't love salted caramel everything, right? Um, so the other thing you're gonna wanna think about is containers because when you're doing a board or a charcuterie, um, you don't necessarily want everything to run together if it's something that would be better in a container, a, a shallow bowl or a small plate or something. So think about that. And you can really just look around your house. I mean, that's what I've been doing the last couple days. And I do entertain a lot. So I have a lot of little dishes and little bowls and things, but you can use whatever you find around the house. Um, I was thinking about how it's good to elevate things sometimes on your board to get more space. And you can use something like a, a, a mini plant stand that you might have. I saw one of those in my house I thought about using. Um, I have a, a covered, um, what do you call those things? Clocher? You know, where, where, yeah, Alex will bring it over here. So I was thinking about, I keep this on my counter a lot with just cookies or whatever. But if I took this off, I could just use the tray portion kind of on one of my boards to elevate something or keep it separate. So there's that. Um, find pretty uh, forks or little little small things that interest you. Um, if you've been with me a while, you know that we lived overseas for a while. And when we did, I got very interested in these little spoons and forks with these little blue beads on them. So I bought a few of them every time I went to a bazaar or a coffee morning and ended up with enough for a, a gathering. So I like to use these. Um, I've also found these just at Wegmans. They're just little, little scoops, like they might be coffee scoops or other things, but they also work really well in your little dishes on your board for olives or hummus or whatever you want to put in there. Um, you're also gonna want some, some nice toothpicks. I also have a bunch that I, um, I found these and ordered for myself and then I later used them for a connoisseur's dinner. Um, but these have the little evil eye bead on the top and these are kind of fun to, to put into things. Um, so yeah, you're gonna wanna have interesting colors, textures, shapes, and things that um, taste good to you because if it tastes good to you, it's probably gonna taste good to your, to your guests. Okay, I think that's everything I wanted to, oh, about cheese knives. Um, you know, you, it's, it's nice to have actual cheese knives if you can when you're, when you're serving a variety of cheeses, which we'll be doing, but you don't have to feel like you can't serve a cheese if you don't have an actual, you know, cheese slicer or knife. You can always just use a regular knife. So don't feel bad about that. Go ahead and get your cheeses. Um, you should always have a mixture of soft, hard, and semi-hard cheeses, if you can do that. Um, I happen to not be a fan of blue cheese or sheep's or goat's milk cheese, so you'll never find that on my boards. Um, I, I'm very picky and I always look for everything that says it's cow's milk, but if you like the sheep's milk or goat's milk, go for it. There's some beautiful ones that come out around the holidays that are like beautiful cheeses wrapped in blueberries and things like that. They tend to be goat cheese. So um, I get those for my kids because they like it, but I don't. So that's just a little bit about the boards that you, you know, the basics of the boards. The other thing I want to talk a little bit about before we get started with the food is keeping your boards um, healthy in, in a sense. Now you can get everything from bamboo to, um, to a really finished board and you can get a variety of sizes. And if you don't have what you consider an actual cheese board or charcuterie board, you can always just use something else around the house, a nice tray or platter, um, but be on the lookout for cheese boards. I have found so many nice ones at um, Home Goods or TJ Maxx um, on sale for really good prices. Um, another thing you can get, and these are the ones I wanted to talk a little bit about keeping, uh, keeping healthy, <laughs> are these that I've, I've picked up over the years at Trader Joe's. So these usually come out in the fall and winter, and they come out in different sizes, I think different years. This is a really interesting one with the live wood edge. So that makes for a really pretty um, charcuterie uh, or other board. But because this wood is really unfinished, um, and this is olive wood, by the way. And because it's really unfinished, what you need to do is keep it healthy by using um, a good mineral oil on it, a food safe mineral oil occasionally. And like everyone else, I kind of forget and I put my boards away. But when I get them out, because I know I'm going to be using them, I like to do it the night before. So all I will do when I want to take care of my boards, let's see, let me move this over and we can go to an overhead. There we go. 
So you can see my board here. And like I said, I would do this the night before so that it has plenty of time to soak in. But my board's looking a little bit dull and I can tell that the wood has dried out a bit. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of my food grade mineral oil on here and work it into the wood. And you'll see that that wood grain is starting to really pop back out. And I'm just using a paper towel. If you prefer to use, you know, a regular cloth that you're going to throw in the wash, that's fine too. But you want to really make it nice and oily so that it has some to soak in. So do all of your edges. And look how beautiful that grain is coming out now. I hope you can see that on the camera. And then I'm going to flip it over and do the back. And then you're going to want to just kind of sit this aside on a counter or a space where it can kind of sit overnight. You want it, might want to put it on um, some plastic wrap or parchment paper or, um, or um, wax paper because, you, you know, if you don't want the oil to get on whatever it is you're, you're sitting it on. But again, you can really see the grain in the wood coming back out and getting healthy again. So this is what I'm talking about. As you can see, it's a little shiny now. The oil's still gonna take some time to soak in, but that's what's gonna happen. So you wanna do that, you know, if you, if you could think of it, do it, you know, once a month or every couple months, but definitely before you're gonna use your board, take it out and do it ahead of time. And as you can see, here's, here's the one that's not oiled up and it's, a little dull, just like the other one was. It really brings the grain back out. Any questions? Feel free to unmute yourself or to um, put something in the chat. This World Kitchen is a little different from the, most of the previous ones in that I want this to be more of a let's talk and let's just do this together kind of thing. So someone is mentioning about your previous discussion about different cheeses saying they've found goat cheese served with jam or marmalade makes a really good combination. Yep. Big jam or you don't have that, have some peach marmalade or whatever. Exactly. You read my mind. Um, we, we keep fig jam because it happens to be one of my husband's favorite being um, a very Persian uh, kind of jam or orange marmalade. Or I found some really interesting tangerine marmalade recently. I also find, um, you know, your regular store, get what you like, but I also have been doing um, a little bit more shopping recently at some of those, those home stores like Home Goods and TJ Maxx. And they have really, really interesting food sections where you're gonna find all kinds of things that you may not have tried before, but um, some interesting marmalades, some different olives, um, tapenades, um, pestos. Um, that are basically international, but they sell them there. So give those a try. So here's my smaller board that I just did the same thing to. And now we're going to let it sit aside. There we go. Okay. Um, and once again, um, I got my food grade mineral oil just online. I think I ordered it off of Amazon, but you can probably find that in some of the um, the nicer supermarkets, or I'm sure you could get it at Kitchen Caboodle if you're here in town locally. All right, so we have a lot to go through today, but one of the things I'm gonna start right now is one of the only recipes I'm gonna uh, share with you today. And it's not really a recipe per se, it's just kind of something I've done for years and years. And this is gonna go on our um, American food board in a little while, but I need to get it in the fridge to firm up a little bit. So let me rinse my hands. here. Okay. And you'll so, be providing them with the recipe for this after the fact? Um, well, I'll just tell them. Uh, yeah, if, if, if anybody um, doesn't have a pen to jot this down as we're doing it, it's really simple. Um, just let me know and I can, I can send you um, the recipe or I can include it in next month's email as well. So um, years and years ago, my dad, I'm from, I'm from Southern Indiana. And so 
we ate a lot of um, chipped beef on toast. And there are some other names for it that are not as, as delicate um, that my dad learned in the army. <laughs> um, but uh, we used to have that a lot. And there used to be a lot of different brands of this dried beef. And when I went to look for this recently, I realized that there really aren't a whole lot of brands, at least at Wegmans or Trader Joe's. But I did find this one. And so I'm just looking for dried beef. And as you can see in that little picture, that's what that was, was the, uh, the chip beef on toast. Um, but I'm using it for, for a cheese ball. So you just want a package of that. And you've got this nice, Alex, you want to go to overhead, please? So. Got this nice um, dried beef. OK. And you can see it kind of comes in, in um, slices. I'm just kind of rolling it up so that I can slice through it. And I wanna make little, little squares, little, little cubes of beef. Turn it and go the other way. The other thing that's gonna go with, into this or make the cheese ball itself is a couple of bricks of cream cheese. So we had already gotten that out to soften up a little bit because you do want that to be a little soft when you're doing this. So you are just gonna get this chopped as fine as you want it. It needs to be fairly well chopped because obviously people are gonna be cutting into that cheese ball and you don't want big strings of the meat. So I've got that. And now I've got my two bricks of cream cheese that we have softened. I'm gonna add the meat in there. Now, if you are vegetarian or vegan and don't want the meat, you obviously can do this without. So don't, don't stress about that. Then I'm gonna add, and this is where I eyeball it folks. So. I can do an actual measurement if you like, but I would say I'm adding, that was one full package of the dried beef, two bricks of cheese. And I'm gonna do, let's call that a quarter cup of dried onion, dehydrated onion. And then um, I use Worcestershire sauce. And I know I probably say that wrong too. And let's say I'm doing about an eighth of a cup of that, I would guess. All right, Alex, can I have the mixer, please? And I'm gonna do my best to mix this up real quick. Now that Worcestershire sauce is pretty salty, so you don't really need to add any salt or pepper to this if you don't want to. I don't normally. So then, hate to lose all that cheese. Tap it off as much as I can. If I weren't doing this on TV or on, on air, I would be licking these later. <laughs> All right, now I am gonna pull this all together. Alex, could you get me the wax paper, please? All right. Okay, well, how about some, some plastic wrap? That'll work too, just plastic wrap. There we go. Sorry, our wax paper was at the end and we didn't realize it. All right, we'll go with the plastic wrap. That'll work just as well. So my cheese is soft. Just a second, you can lay it down there. Thank you. Everybody remember my, uh, my sous chef here, my son, Alex. He's my sous chef slash technical director slash everything else. So he's helping me out behind the scenes. All right. So 
So there's kind of a funny family story that goes with this cheese ball. And since I know my oldest daughter doesn't watch this, I, um, I feel comfortable telling the story without her. <laughs> so when my husband was in graduate school, this was one of the few things I knew how to make. And I thought this was pretty fancy back then. Remember, I grew up in Southern Indiana. And so we also were, you know, he was in grad school, so money was tight and we had a toddler. And so one night we were having friends over and we decided, I decided to make this and some crackers thinking I was being a good hostess. And now I'm gonna wrap this up and try to turn it into as much of a ball as I can. We'll form it again later once it's chilled but this is kind of how we do that. And then we just kind of form it into a ball. So our friends come over and I put the cheese ball and crackers out on the coffee table. I'm so excited. And of course my toddler walks right up to the coffee table and sneezes all over everything. So no more cheese ball. All right, Alex is showing you. It's just a, just a ball in in plastic wrap there. And we're gonna chill that and we'll come back to that a little later. Now, let's get on with this. Anybody else ever have a kitchen or a, a, an entertaining disaster like that? All right, so um, the other thing that I want you to be aware of when you think you wanna to put together a cheese board or any kind of board is don't think that you have to go out and spend a fortune to do it. I mean, obviously you can on cheeses. I will say that um, Trader Joe's has some really amazing cheeses and they're, they're very inexpensive. So if you haven't checked out their cheese section, please do that. Um, but also shop your own pantry. You wanna go to the front, Alex? Mm -hmm. So shop your own pantry. And, and that's one of the things I've been doing too. So, um, you can look for, like I happen to have some, some focaccia sticks that I just had in my pantry. Um, any kind of crackers that you have from uh, assorted crackers from different places. Um, I also think you can use really interesting things like I found these mixed berry granola minis. These are like little granola balls, but those looked really fun and I thought they would be really cute on, um, on a platter or charcuterie found some of these little tiny chocolate chip cookies. Those would be cute. And then of course, don't forget chocolate. You can always put chocolate on your boards because who doesn't love chocolate? And like I said, with salty or um, you know savory, a little sweet is always nice. So I'm going to start by showing you my favorite board and then we'll get into some more of the, the, the traditional boards. So this is what I was talking about when I mentioned that I like to do a Persian breakfast board. Let's see, if I can see everything here and I'll just point out what I've done. So obviously I've got a lot of color going on. My dishes are colorful, but also my choice of um, vegetables and fruits and things like that is very colorful. Um, so what we do for Persian breakfast often is different kinds of bread. So I have a lavash, which is a thin bread. And I've cut these into um, single serving kind of pieces. I've got pita bread. Both of these I just found at Trader Joe's or there's also a nice new Middle Eastern shop in the Hamilton Plaza if you're local where you can find those things. Um, I went ahead and got a, um, a pomegranate because those are very traditional. Um, unfortunately, the one I found is not the greatest, but um, it's not really the season for pomegranates yet. That's more into the winter. So those will look a little nicer later. We always have walnuts on our breakfast. We have pistachios. We have two kinds of marmalade. So this is the or jam. This is the fig jam that we were talking about earlier. And this is the um, orange marmalade. These are just some dried apricots. I've cut up some Persian cucumbers and the mainstay of the um, breakfast is always butter and feta cheese and honey. So typically what you would do is take your piece of bread, take a little bit of the feta cheese, put it in there, maybe a piece of cucumber, a walnut or some pistachios, a little bit of butter, 
um, and a little bit of marmalade or jam and you wrap it up and you're gonna eat that. That's your, you know, you do that several times for breakfast. Sometimes you wanna put the honey on instead of the marmalade or jam. I also added some, some uh, grapes just for more color and to have a little bit more fruit. Another thing I found while I was out looking this week was these amazing and delightful sugared dried oranges, which I thought were really fun. I haven't tried them yet, but I thought they, look, they looked beautiful and I thought that um, they would be an interesting touch to add to that. And as you can see, it's a little crowded. So I do have you know, some of my spoons in here. I could put a couple more in for the nuts. But when it's a family gathering, you probably don't even necessarily need to worry about that, right? Because you're all family. So this is what we would normally do. And as I said, this is one of my favorites and it is, uh, <laughs> it looks nice. And this is what I'm talking about with trying to add color and different textures and different flavors, sweet, salty, whatever you have in mind. Okay, that's our Persian breakfast. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about the different boards and different things you can do with them. Um, I, you know, you can use whatever you have on hand. I know that um, bamboo is a great board to use and I happen to have a, a nice big bamboo board. And I do use this one quite a bit because it's, it's a nice size but also bamboo um, typically doesn't stain like a lot of woods will. And it also is of course um, sustainable. So it's nice to use bamboo when you can. Um, also when I'm out just kind of shopping, I always kind of run through the, the home goods section and look for things that I think will be interesting to put on. And I found like this little bamboo board with little containers, but that's a chalkboard on the front. So I can write the various jams or whatever I'm putting in here in case, you know, this isn't a family thing, this is for guests. So they'll know what it is, um, you know, so maybe the fig jam looks like something else to them or a red one, they're not sure if that's um, strawberry or boysenberry or something like that. So you can write those in with a chalk pen or actual chalk. So that's another thing I, I like to find when I'm out. Um, so for my Italian board, you're gonna want to just find a number of different um, cured meats or dried meats. Charcuterie actually means dried meat, but it's, it's kind of become a thing to do your dried meats with, with a variety of cheeses and fruits and even vegetables. So um, I was able to find a few different types of dried meat. And again, go with what is appealing to you and your family because you're the ones who are gonna have to eat it. Um, a variety of salami. I found some Parmesan crisps. I went ahead and just got some regular pepperoni. Uh, we would normally have a variety of olives, so I've got those. And I also want to add in this one some red peppers. So I've got some red peppers that I found. And I'm going to cut up some pears and add some honey. So to get started, I'm gonna have Alex start opening these packages for me and I'm gonna grab a couple of my pears. And as you can see, we found some nice small apples and pears this week, which was kind of surprising, but I'm really glad we were able to find them. And this is nothing, um, what am I trying to say? This is totally up to you. You can do what you wanna do with it. So there's no right or wrong with a board like this. I'm just gonna start putting my pears out. Of course, you do wanna make sure that your, your fruit is um, ripe. Nothing worse than getting a tasteless piece of pear, right? And there's so many different varieties that you can choose from right now. So I'm going with some pear. You could also add some apple if you like. Is there any more questions or anything, Alex? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So I like to start on the corners or start in the middle, one or the other, and then work your way across. Um, so there's my pears. Now, Alex has gotten some of our meats open. Let me wash my hands off here. These boards can be really interesting. I know another thing I wanted to show you real quick while I'm at it. Um, use um, just, if you have just cheese sticks, like mozzarella sticks in your house, Alex, my hands are a little greasy. Can you open that for me, please? Go ahead and do that. And you'll notice if you go to, um, again, to Wegmans or Trader Joe's or any of those stores, you'll see these and they're very, very expensive to buy them, but you can easily make your own. So right now I've got some prosciutto and I'm gonna just lay my prosciutto out on my tray and then start on one end and wrap my cheese stick so that I've got some prosciutto wrapped mozzarella on here. And as you can imagine, Alex and I will be having charcuterie every night this week. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. And just one more here. That's not a hardship. Alex really likes this sort of thing. All right. I'm going to keep those a little bit away from my pear because they're kind of the same color and I want to add some more color in between there. So now I might also put out a little bit. And, and the nice thing about getting this at um, Wegmans or somewhere pre-done is that they make it in a nice kind of uh, uh, ribbony way for you. So you've already got that. So you don't really have to do much to it. You can just choose it and lay it down. So that's my prosciutto. I have a couple of other things here have some of this large salami. Names are on the cup. Yeah, that's cal cal Calabrese salami. Um, and then I have some Capicolo. I might put that over here. Some of the smaller salamis. Kind of go here. Do whatever you like. Make it as pretty as you like. Dress it up. This is some chorizo. Again, that's very popular at my house. And this is a salchion. Hope I'm saying these things correctly. Another form of salami. Alex, you want to take that? I might put that there. I'm going to add a little bit of just plain old pepperoni, if I can get it open, which I can't. Alex, can you do that for me, please? All right, um, get this open. So these, as I said, are just some um, interesting Parmesan crisps I found. So you always wanna have some bread or crackers out on your tray as well. And if I was doing this for a guest, I obviously would do some more of the uh, wrapped mozzarella sticks, but I'm not gonna do that right now. Okay. Also have a nice batch of Serrano ham here that I can put out. And I'm kind of building this around. So I'm gonna need to have um, a nice centerpiece eventually. And again, I'm really doing this just off the top of my head. It might look different if I did it again tomorrow. Put some pepperonis out. Here we go. Now we have a nice variety of our meats. I want to add, I'm gonna use a dish in the center here. Move things around a bit.
Now, I want to add a variety of olives. I'm open. There we go. So these are the Castle Veltrano olives. And I do tend to use pitted olives just because I, I'm a little worried about any of my guests or family breaking a tooth <laughs> on my olives. So I do go ahead and use the pitted ones. This is just a variety. These are Greek olives. And you can use separate containers or you can use one container for everything. It's totally up to you. And these are just another batch of different Italian olives with some Kalmatas in there. I love Kalmatas. Okay, there we go. All right, now, another thing I wanted to mention to you, if you wanna make up your um, boards ahead of time, you probably would worry a little bit about your pear or your apple browning before you're ready to serve or before your guests are there. So what I like to do is go ahead and take a lemon and get my lemon juice into a bowl. So I'm just now reaming this lemon here. And don't forget to always put your citrus rinds down your garbage disposal if you have one because it's helpful to clean and makes it smell much better. So I'll do that. And now what I would do is take all of my pears or if I was using apples, I would toss it in this lemon juice and it's gonna give it a little bit of a lemon tang but not terribly much. But that citrus is gonna keep it from turning brown before you're ready to have your, your guests eat it. So then I would Drain it probably a little better than I am right here, but that's to keep it from browning. And that works on, as I said, apples or pears. Another trick I learned years ago when I was helping my sister um, prepare some lunches for school kids after, in, over the summer at her church was that you can also use um, any kind of a citrus drink like Sprite or 7-Up also works. That's what they used. Okay, so now I want to figure out where I'm going to put my cheeses. And it looks like I'm kind of deciding that I'm gonna keep my meats over here. Got some fruit there. I think I'll put my, my rolled up cheese here. Keep my bread there. And now I'm gonna go through and pick out some different cheeses. So I found this really nice Toscano. It's uh, soaked in a Syrah. I'm not gonna open all of them right now just because I'm not sure that we would eat them all so quickly, but that's got a nice purple rind on it. So I might have that one over here. Um, let's go with a Fontina. I have a nice Fontina cheese. That's got a nice red rind on it. Might put that near my pears. I'm not necessarily, I mean, a lot of these are Italian. The meats, of course, are Italian. Some of the cheeses are Italian, but I'm also going with what kind of cheese I and my family like. So I think I would use maybe this Asiago. And what else do I have here? Oh, this is an Italian truffle. It's a, it's a sort of a soft cheese, but I thought it sounded really good. We're very into truffle in my house right now. So I probably would use a little bit of an Italian truffle in here somewhere. Maybe I put my meat and my uh, breads right here. Um, I probably would add some of my crackers in there and some of these Toscano toasts I probably would add in here. Make sure we have plenty of toast, crackers, and breads. Um, another thing that, that you probably would want to do, and I didn't do that this weekend, is get some fresh baguette or fresh Italian bread, and you can always add that in as well, and that makes for a nice softer textured um, option for your Someone's asking, grain. do you pre-cut the cheeses once you have them out of the pack? Okay, so for the cheeses, if I was to take them out, obviously the softer cheeses, I would just put on the tray with a, a cheese knife or a regular knife. 
the harder cheeses, I think it is probably easier and better for your guests if you go ahead and cut some slices, several slices out of it. Um, I'm, I probably wouldn't cut the entire cheese just to keep the form because one of the things one of our Italian connoisseurs dinner chefs told me one time was you need to um, respect. respect the form of the cheese. So I wouldn't completely cut it, um, but I would cut several slices so that your guests are aware, you know, how the slices should go <coughs> and, um, you know, what, what the knife, you know, that you have the knife there for them to use. So again, play around with it, put them where you would want them to be. And then I also would go ahead and probably for this one, I would also go ahead and drop in some fresh raspberries around and just kind of fill in, fill in the holes where you see room to have something else for some color. And who doesn't love some fresh raspberries? maybe some grapes. And I also, when I'm putting grapes out, I like to go ahead and um, cut them into, you know, uh, portions, I guess I would say. So this is like four grapes on a stem. So I would have that somewhere and go ahead and just kind of portion them up a little so that when someone's grabbing it, they're not grabbing the entire um, bunch of your grapes. Just for some more color and interest. And then I would go ahead and put out whatever type of knife you're going to use. Um, as I said, if, if you don't have an actual cheese knife, just go ahead and use a regular knife. Um, I picked one up when I was in Amsterdam. So I have, you know, what I consider a, an actual cheese knife with a slicer in it. Um, so I might go ahead and like one of my harder cheeses you know, do, you know, slice it up to get a few slices and then leave it there so that folks know that that's what that's for or under whatever you want to do. So it depends on the size of your board, um, what all you want to put on it, how, how many people you think you're going to have. Obviously, you want to have plenty for, for your, your crowd. And don't be afraid also if you've put the cheese board out and you see that certain things are going more than others. Um, you know, bring your cheese board back into the kitchen for a few minutes and replenish it and then take it on back out there. I also put a couple of spoons in here for my olives. And I might even, um, if I could find the room, I might even put a, a, a couple of toothpick things in there or I could go ahead and pre-stab a few olives so that that's also understood. Obviously people do understand, but it also just looks nice. For those of you who have been to our um, VIP connoisseurs dinner uh, with the, the cooking class with the chef, we, uh, we always have something like this out prior to the, the VIP cooking class so that folks aren't starving as they're cooking. And I like to do that. Um, so yeah, this is, this is what I would call my Italian board. Um, obviously, if I had some fresh bread, I could scoot the meats a little closer together and add some fresh bread in here. Whatever works for you, whatever your family likes. Since so I can't really see the sides of the cheese if you want to lift it. So you see, we've got the, the cheeses. Let me turn it around. There we go. See the nice purple on the Syrah? There we go. So this is what I would consider an international, I mean, I'm sorry, an Italian cheese board, but with a little bit of extra in there, just the things that we like. All right. Okay, now I'm going to go into my French. I also could have put, I have some tapenade I could have put in there. Um, I would just, you know, add whatever you have and whatever looks good to you. So for the, let's see here, actually I had this one ready for the French. All right. Obviously for the French cheese board, you're gonna want, um, again, a variety of cheeses and the mainstay here is gonna be your brie. Um, there's so many different varieties of brie that you can pick up. Um, I like the triple cream or the, 
uh, some of the aged breeds are really nice. Um, again, I probably will use some grapes in here. I have um, a Gouda that I like. It's got a nice red rind on it. And then one of my daughters turned me on to this over the summer. It's called the Unexpected Cheddar Cheese. It is the nicest cheddar cheese you will ever try. Try this at Trader Joe's. It's got a really uh, intense flavor, but it's, it's not like overpowering. So I really like that one. Um, I would go back with more crackers, of course, or again, if I had my fresh French bread, I would, I would use that. I'm gonna go with a little container here. I'll use one of these. Maybe we can just like this. Throwing some raspberries on there, just because I have them. Yeah. Another thing is if you use some sort of dish in the center, obviously you're, you're, you're taking up some more space, but it's also gonna be colorful and look nice. And then, sorry. <laughs> You get it? It's it's a little greasy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think the container itself has a little bit of oil in it. All right, I found these really, really nice fresh caprese mozzarella cheese balls that are fun because they are individual size. They are in an oil as well, but they're seasoned. They're really nice. Use those. And again, my cheeses are not all French or all Italian. They're just kind of what we like. If you wanna be really, really true to the, to the theme, you can talk to the cheese person at your favorite shop or go to the, uh, again, if you're here in State College, the, the cheese shop downtown is fabulous. And they have all sorts of amazing cheeses. You can head, out, head over there for a really special cheese. Um, and again, I probably would go ahead and pre pre stick a few of my fancy little toothpicks in there for a little bit more color and just to kind of get it going. And then I might sit this next to it just so that people have more options to pick those up. Um, for this one, I think I'm going to throw some of my tapenade on here. these. There are also so many different tapenades you can get now. Um, olive ones, of course, but then I've seen them with artichokes and all kinds of interesting things in them. So I'll throw that over here. Uh, maybe I will put some more olives in. Open one of the Castle Veltrano ones there, Alex. This one here, this. Here. This board is getting full really quickly. All right, and you want to hand me some of the meats again. And again, I might rearrange a little bit here just so that I can fit things in better. And you'll see that you do that as you're as you're going along, you might have to move things around a bit. Could throw some of those in there. A little color. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to use a little bit of my 
Serrano ham. Oh, these are individually wrapped. We'll go with these then. Some of the salamis. And then chorizo. Okay, the ribbons, the ribbons, there we go. All right. There's the Serrano ham I was looking for. Maybe I'll move my grapes out for a minute and see what I can fit in there. Put some of my Serrano right in there. And do we have the other one there, Alex? The uh, prosciutto. Prosciutto in here. Another nice thing you can do if you're going to have these varieties of meats and cheeses, um, you can purchase when you're out some um, little um, sticks that you can write the variety on, and that way your guests will know what it is that they're eating in case they want to, you know, have some from them for themselves later on. Now, put my grapes back in here in my, my little batches for a little color. There we go. Okay. And again, whatever meats or cheeses your family is into, feel free to use those. Um, for the brie, I probably will want to think here. Maybe I will scoot this around this way because my brie needs a little bit more space because it's a little bit, it, it'll spread a little bit. Once it warms up, the brie will start spreading. So I will put a little bit of the grapes around it, but leave it room to spread out as it warms up. There we go. And what else could I put in here? Um, could also throw maybe just some walnuts in there. All right. So there's another one. And again, we're using a variety of colors, meats, cheeses, textures, the, the tapenade versus the, the whole olives. Okay. Here we go. All right, I can take that one away. And now we're gonna move on to, I think, a fun one. <laughs> there we go. And I'm gonna bring this over. So we'll see which one we wanna use. So this is what I was talking about. Go to the um, overhead, buddy. This is what I was talking about with um, a variety of heights. So what I have is a big platter here that's a big ceramic platter, but I also have kind of a raised um, display here. And that's what I'm going to use. How's the cheese going? Cool, but still a little soft. I think we could need to go ahead and roll it. Yeah. yeah. Um, while he's getting that out, I'm going to go ahead and chop up some if I can find what I'm going to do. I need um, a, a, a chopping board. Oh, that's there we go. I didn't see where it went. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and chop up some walnuts. And you can do these in your food processor. I happen to have my handy chopper here. So I'm just doing it with that. It doesn't need to be terribly finely chopped, just a little bit. You. Is just to coat our cheese ball. And I might have, you know, if I had more time, I probably would have left it in the refrigerator a little longer to firm up a little bit more. But I wanted to give you an idea of what this will look like and to use it on this, what I'm considering my Americana board. Okay, so. 
it could still use a little more time in the fridge, as I said, but this is how we're gonna do this. So you can see I put it on the nuts and now I'm just gonna gently roll it so that the nuts are all around it. And again, if you were vegan or vegetarian or any of your guests were, you could easily do the same thing without putting the dried beef in there. And as you can see, I mean, I don't know, it was in there, what, 15, 20 minutes? And um, it was firm enough to go ahead and roll. Now, I would keep this in the fridge then until I was ready to serve it. But because we're gonna do this, I'm gonna put it here on my raised platter. Put this over here. And we have really, really delicious cheese ball there. Now, um, also, because I want this to be a little festive for the holidays, I'm going to have some holiday items here that I might be able to squeeze in. we go. Because of our cheese bowl, obviously, we want some nice crackers on there. We'll just lay those out as they come out of the package in a nice uh, fan there. All right. Going to grab another hmm. Maybe I will steal my I will steal my olive tray off of one of my other boards because I want the olives. There we go. Put some olives on this one. Another one of our family favorites is hummus. So hummus out. And we have a couple of different bowls here that I can put that in. Um, another thing that I'll mention, I don't know how many of you are really fans of hummus, but you can get, of course, hummus in any grocery store these days. Um, one of the things you can do to make it even more flavorful and more authentic is to add a little bit of olive oil on your hummus when you're mixing it gives it a little bit more flavor and makes it really authentic. So I'm going to put my hummus into my bowl here. I'll have some hummus on here. Use some of these crackers for some variety. There we go. Okay. I also wanted to add my red peppers on this one. These are just roasted red peppers that you can buy in a jar like I did. Those go really, really well with the hummus or the cheese ball or the olives. Okay. There we go. So I've got my color, get some red in there. I'm gonna put my pumpkin right here in front. I know you're gonna have a hard time seeing this from above. We'll, we'll do a side view here in a little bit and you'll see what it looks like at eye level. Um, I'll need that one. So I'm gonna move that out of the way. I have a nice Gouda I can throw on here or I could also pull, um, this other fontina might be nice for some cheese. Again, my, my platter is a little small for this. So if I was doing this, I might choose a larger platter. <clears throat> and I can't tell you how many times I've done that. I've started a platter and realized I just need more space. So I go for the larger one. So there's that. Let me put a little spoon in here for the hummus. Uh, another thing I really like is to add some dried cranberries. And right now you can get the um, orange flavored dried cranberries, which are delicious. I'm gonna add those to my tray. And 
maybe just for fun, I'll throw some grapes in there. A little bit more color and a little fruit. So we've got all sorts of things. One of the things we haven't really done today, which obviously you can do, is to um, do a lot of the, the crudités. So you could do um, carrots, celery, you know, any of those types of, of vegetables that you might want to add. So this would be kind of a nice Americana platter with the cheese ball, crackers, fruit, cheese, and olives. And again, think about what you've got in your house. You don't necessarily have to go out and purchase a bunch of, you know, elevated platters or big platters. Use, um, use your turkey platter if you have one of those. Um, any kind of board that you might have. I know a lot of people are really into using um, slabs of wood now, like slabs of a tree, um, that live oak look. And the only thing I would say is if you're doing that and it hasn't been made food safe, be sure you put some wax paper or something down before you put your, um, your food on it just to keep it safe. You can cut it to the shape of your board or whatever you're gonna use. So there's that one. Okay, Alex, you wanna get that out of the way real quick? And then we'll go for the last one here. There we go. All right, now the last one I have to show you today is um, just a fun kind of fall one because, you know, taking into account that we're almost at Halloween and Thanksgiving. Sorry, didn't get this open. I apologize for opening all these things in front of you. Normally I would have done that, but this weekend we have hosted my 20, almost 22 month old granddaughter and um, she was a handful. So some of this stuff didn't get done as far in advance as I would normally do it, but I wouldn't give up having her over for anything in the world. So there we go. All right. So I have some of this delicious caramel apple dip. And I noticed that Marzetti's is really upping its game because not only do they have the classic caramel apple dip, they have light caramel apple dip, and they now have salted caramel apple dip. So, um, you know, get what you like. I, I almost went for the salted caramel because I really do like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, another thing I found was some of these really fun Trader Joe's pumpkin spice batons which are just a lot of fun and look beautiful. So I'm using one of my boards that has a little indention here to place those in, because those are a lot of fun. And of course, the broken ones, you just have to eat yourself. That's the, that's the rule, that's the law. So if there aren't any broken ones in there, you can just break a few, just, just so you have one for yourself. There we go. And then of course, I'm going to find my apples and pears. And um, one of the things I think is really nice to do, where did my lemon juice go, Alex? Over there, there we go. Um, is maybe leave, find, find a really nice one, a really pretty one. Let's see what we've got here. This is a nice looking apple. I'm gonna put it on here. And, oh, that's a pretty pear. It's got a little red to it. So maybe I'll put that there. And then I'll go ahead and slice up the ones that I want to have sliced and ready to eat. But leave the whole one there just for aesthetics. And I don't know about you. I mean, some people I think probably like the long slices. Maybe some like would cut these in half. I like leaving them a little longer. I feel like you can get a little bit more of a bite there. And so I might even have done this, and I'm sure I did years ago um, when my kids were in school, to do something like this to have for them after school so that when they came home, there was something nice waiting for them. Especially, they always love this caramel apple dip. There we go. And if you had some, I chose red apples and, to go with my 
pears because the pears were so beautiful this week, but you could also obviously go with some uh, green apple if you like a tartar apple. There we go. And again, I would just kind of keep going to fill in my space or I could also take what's left of my grapes and add those in to fill in my space and give a little bit more option for the fruit. So you've got the fruit, you've got a little bit of a caramel apple dip and you've got those delightful pumpkin bat batons. So that is another option for a board, okay? And if I had even more space, Alex, can I have that back please? Because this is my, my fall theme here, I might try to go ahead and work in my little pumpkin just for fun. There we go. Oh, he went back to the front view. Okay, there we go. Uh, let me turn it around. <laughs> there we go. Kind of just carefully turn it. There we go. All right. So I hope this has given you some ideas, but also kind of taken away any of the, um, you know, trepidation of, of attempting to do something like this. There's no perfect science to it. You can, you can do whatever you like, whatever feels good to you. Oh, and I did forget, never would you get, I would add a little bit of this chocolate to it. These looked really good. Jo dark chocolate, raspberry almond crunch bark. I would definitely add some of that in here somewhere um, in pieces, of course. There we go, beautiful. So it's gonna add a little bit more color, texture, and a little bit extra to your, to your board. Can you go to the overhead, please? Mm -hmm. okay. There we go, I have a little bit of chocolate. Everybody loves a little bit of chocolate. Okay, there we go, all right. So I think that's everything for this week. I thank you for joining us on World Kitchen. And as I said, um, thanks for sticking with me. Those of you who have been with me for the full year, um, we will um, let you know what's gonna happen next month as soon as we have it all nailed down. And then in December, we're sure we're gonna be doing a world of soups. So uh, when it's nice and chilly outside and we're seeing that snow, we'll be going with some international soups. So if anybody has any questions, let me know. And if not, um, have a great afternoon. <laughs>